kind of strange to talk about a new favorite Victorian author, but this is an author that I did not know about prior to booktube and the first place I heard it talked about was of course on Katie from Books and Things channel and Katie had not read her but she wanted to get to her and so I thought I needed to investigate this Mrs. Oliphant and I am so glad that I did. So the two books that I've read by Mrs. Oliphant I read this month um, The Doctor's Family. And then uh, I think in the month of November, I read The Rector. These are very short novels, and they are the first two in the Carlingford Chronicles. There are five books total. I think it's five books or six in the Carlingford Chronicles. And the most famous is Miss Marchbanks, and that one is still in print. Most of Mrs. Oliphant's works, unfortunately, are out of print. But the other thing that was a catalyst for me to check out Mrs. Oliphant was my dad showing me an article in The New Criterion, which is kind of like a niche readers magazine that a lot of them read uh, kind of obscure classics and this article was called The Marvelous Mrs. Oliphant and this was just like totally the catalyst for me to read. So the next month after I read this, I read this in October, I was like, okay, I'm going to read a Mrs. Oliphant. So I bought, you know, a couple of her books on my Nook, my e-reader, and I am, you know, bummed that most of her books aren't in print, but I'm so thankful for e-readers that I can get a hold of them, which if I was trying to read her 20 years ago, I would have had to, you know, scour used bookstores in England to try to find something. So much more easy to access her works. And several things that convinced me to read Mrs. Oliphant. Uh, the first, it says that she was reputed to be Queen Victoria's favorite novelist. So I was like, I have to check this woman out. And it says that she was the author of 98 novels, 25 volumes of nonfiction, as well as numerous works in translation. She was fluent in Italian and did professional translations from German and French. Then this paragraph was also very convincing. It says, yet a more delightful companion than Mrs. Oliphant is hard to imagine. At her best, she was every bit as humane a novelist as Trollope, a sharp, as sharp-eyed an observer of the human condition as Henry James or Edith Wharton, of social class and religion as George Eliot or Jane Austen, as much of a craftsman of tension as Wilkie Collins, all with a generosity of spirit lacking in Thackeray. Thackeray. Her best work evidences a tongue-in-cheek perspective and wry humor that sometimes takes the first-time reader by surprise, and her deeply mordant take on Victorian social constraints makes it tempting to treat her as a feminist avant la lettre, even if she embraced and embodied the period's sentimental vision of womanly self-sacrifice and maternal love. So she talks about these real issues, but she's very winsome as she's talking about it. Um, and then later on, they say her sometimes shaggy plots, and that immediately jogged my brain to think of Angela Thurkle. So Angela Thurkle, in case you don't know, writes very charming and whimsical, but kind of over-the-top modern classics, and I have really enjoyed several of her books. And, you know, I put uh, Pomfret Towers on my spring TBR. So she's just really fun. There's not going to be a lot of meat necessarily to the characters. They are kind of caricatured, but the writing is so beautiful and the characters are at the same time compelling even if they aren't all that full-bodied and the plots are kind of contrived but it's just so much fun so they're really a treat to read and that is exactly what uh, the two books that I read by Mrs. Oliphant felt. So the first book in the Carlingford Chronicles is called The Rector and that is just about this rector who all the women in the town are kind of wondering who is he going to marry and he's super stressed out about it. He, he's like under lots of pressure and this was about 87 pages so I think I finished it in one sitting and it was just delightful and so much fun and just very amusing. I think amusing is a great quality because she really does, like I said, feel like a Victorian Angela Thurkle. And then the second I read was The Doctor's Family. There's a doctor who has a brother who's been known to be somewhat irresponsible and just kind of not you know, taking care of his own life and taking matters into his own hands. And then this is uh, even more increased when uh, this doctor gets a knock on his door by the wife and children of this guy and the wife's sister who have sailed all the way from Australia to find him. And he had left them behind and it's just really, really um, dramatic and it felt just like reading a soap opera and I loved it so much. And in addition to that, then this doctor who is the main character begins to fall in love with the wife's sister and so it's kind of his um, trying to pursue her and trying to woo her and there's many amusing conversations that happen with them. So those are the first two in the Carlingford Chronicles and the uh, subsequent books definitely get longer. They're over like 200 pages long. 
and I'm really looking forward to getting to those. So after I finish the Carlingford Chronicles, I'll be checking out her other books. Apparently she has 97 of them, so I've got a ways to go. Let me know if Mrs. Oliphant sounds amusing to any of you, and I look forward to doing upcoming book reviews of the next in the Carlingford Chronicles, and I will see you guys for another video soon. Bye!